Jack Smith just hasn't been beaten up enough in Washington, D.C. by the U.S. Supreme Court, so he files a superseding indictment. The same charges, by the way, two of which the Supreme Court has said it can't bring. So I don't know why Jack Smith is including them and thinks that he's going to sneak that by the U.S. Supreme Court ultimately uh, when the Trump team will appeal it just like the Fisher team appealed it, which we supported at the ACLJ and filed that those charges uh, were not uh, the right charges and were unconstitutional. So guess what? This would definitely violate the Department of Justice Office of Legal Policy advisory white paper that's been in place that says you don't file criminal charges against active political candidates running for office uh, 60 days before an election. And technically, in 10 days, people in North Carolina will start being able to vote on ballots they receive by mail. But get this, listen to Will about how much of the country is voting way before uh, we get to election day. When you look at when states early vote and or have uh, absentee, no excuse voting, it covers over 90% of the country. 45 states plus the District of Columbia have early voting or non-excuse absentee voting or mail-in voting bef- at least 10 days before the election. So we know just from that that over 90% of the country is within the 60-day window that he was trying to avoid by filing this yesterday. The earliest being in 10 days in North Carolina when ballots uh, go out. So this is what you have to ask the left. They like talking about, we talk about election day. They talk about election election uh, periods of time, you know, because of the early voting. I, I am going to ask our ACLJ uh, lit- FOIA team to send a FOIA to the Department of Justice to ask, just point blankly, have you redefined what that white memo stands for? And does it no longer stand for uh, uh, actual election when people are voting, but does it only stand for election day? And is that why you, Attorney General Merrick Garland, would approve something like this? And by the way, same charges, two of which the Supreme Court dismissed against a client in a case we were involved with, a J6 client, that we were involved with the U.S. Supreme Court. Let me tell you what this new and superseding indictment isn't. It isn't any new allegation on anything. Zero. Nothing. It's the same allegations as before, recast in a way to try to get around a Supreme Court decision that was a complete defeat for Jack Smith. You brought up the point about the Department of Justice own policy, that policy through the Office of Legal Counsel, which is the advisor, the legal advisor to the attorney general, has had a policy for decades saying there can be no legal action taken within 60 days of an election because it could be deemed interference or putting your thumb on the scale. What they've done here is redefine interference. So no longer is it interference if you destroy a person by filing indictment after indictment after indictment, even when you've been losing, which they have, and they get away with that. So that's where that is right now. We've talked about the Quiet Skies program. We're representing you as a colleague here at the ACLJ uh, in, in uh, involving you. But, I mean, can you imagine how that kind of political uh, persecution would ramp up uh, under a Harris-Waltz administration? I mean, it's, it's, it scares me. And it should scare every American. And, and again... You know, the hypocrisy and the lies and the phoniness of Kamala Harris stares us in the face on a daily basis. She stands there on the debate stage or on the Democratic convention stage, and she's got all her surrogates saying Kamala Harris is going to be the president president to defend our freedom, to defend the rule of law, to defend democracy. And yet all we've seen under the Harris-Biden administration over the last three and a half years to include this latest attack by special counsel Jack Smith with more indictments against Donald Trump is weaponization of our government institutions and the use of lawfare against their political opponents, those they deem a threat. So yes, I have been experiencing this with their adding me to their secret domestic terror watch list, but there has been no bigger target and recipient of their political lawfare than Donald J. Trump. And we're seeing this continue now. So There's no question about the fact that Kamala Harris, if elected president, will not hesitate to use every lever of power available to her 
to silence, smear, and destroy anyone who dares to challenge her authority or her positions or her decisions. Uh, and and that, that, for everyone watching and listening, uh, that is something that is not about Democrats versus Republicans. That is what will turn and is already turning our country into something that more resembles an authoritarian dictatorship and banana republic than it does one where we as Americans in a democratic republic can have confidence that our justice system will be fair and equal to all, and that we don't have to think before we exercise our right to free speech and wonder, gosh, I wonder if I say this, will it trigger my own government to come after me? We were involved in the case, in the Fisher case, and yet that two of these charges out of the four are still there. And these were two charges the Supreme Court said in a January 6th, one of those protesters who entered the Capitol illegally, uh, while it could be charged with other crimes, could not be charged with obstruction of or uh, obst- the attempt to obstruct an official proceeding or a conspiracy to obstruct an official proceeding because they said that's not what this was. And of course, now they're trying to apply it to President Trump for giving a speech when the Supreme Court wouldn't apply it for someone who was actually in the building when when they had to actually stop the counting for, for a bit of time. The entire process in which Jack Smith is still proceeding, and you got to say without question, he is trying everything he can do to bring these criminal cases to fruition because there's another aspect of this. This is the taxpayer's money. The latest indication was he spent something like $14 million in the last like eight months or so. And there's going to be an election in, you know, basically two months. So to go through all of this, when you know there's going to be an election, how is it not election interference when you continue to bring motions and superseding indictments? I just want to underscore that we're involved in all of these. We filed in the Fisher case, which led to the fact that he had to now file a superseding indictment. But by the way, he didn't have to do. He could have realized, you know what? We lost this one. We, it's not a strong enough case. Uh, it, prosecutors are supposed to make those kind of decisions, even if they f- feel so strongly that Donald Trump did something on January 6th that they want to prosecute. If, if they get a case back from the top court of the United States that makes it basically impossible for them to bring the charges that they wanted to bring, uh, they can't just keep bringing them uh, and then changing the terms around and say, well, let's not call him President Trump, we're, even though he was at the time. We're going to call him Candidate Trump. I mean, that's one of the differences in their brief. But he was the president at the time uh, that he was making those speeches. Because as the Supreme Court says, you got to find all these terms. What's, what is an official act? What's not an official act? And that's not so easy in the middle of a, a presidency, even towards the end of a presidency, when you are the actual president. And you're you know speaking in front of the White House, for goodness sakes, about the election and election integrity. 